Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest webinar in our Medtronic GYN series with the team at WebSearch. So today we have a very interesting topic for you. It's um, looking at the feasibility of using the TrueClear hysteroscopic tissue removal system for the evacuation of early miscarriage. So as I'm sure you're aware, this is a topic that has been talked about more and more as we look towards a world where we don't want to be performing blind procedures in the uterine cavity. But to help us discuss through this topic today, we are joined by two expert faculty, both of whom have been using this technique for a while now. Professor Marty Pansky is a clinical professor at Goldman Medical School at Ben Gurion University, and he's the head of the Gynae Endoscopic Unit at the Ashuta Ashad University Hospital. And also joining us on the faculty is Dr. Ashri Barrel, he's the head of gynecology at Ashuta Ashad University Hospital, and he's also also a lecturer in Apsingaini at Ben Gurion University. So before I hand you over to Professor Hansky, I just want to remind you that we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the, the talk, and so please put in all of your questions um, into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Perfect. So without further ado, over to you, Professor Pansky. You're on mute. Okay, so I'll start. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, hysteroscopic evacuation of mis miscarriage. Um, okay, this uh, talk is uh, supported by Medtronic, but it uh, does represent our own opinions and uh, uh, experience with the procedure. So basically the management of early miscarriage today is done either medically or surgically by dilatation and curatage. The optimal management necessitates complete evacuation of the uterus with minimal endometrial damage to conserve future fertility and minimal need for future follow-up and intervention. DNC and aspiration curatage in the first trimester are safe procedures with a small percentage of major complications, approximately 0.1% uh, uh, or minor complications, approximately 1%. However, we always strive for better and these procedures are done blindly and rely mainly on the experience of the surgeon. Some of the well-known complications of DNC include uterine perforation, retained products of conception, adhesion formation, and in a recent systematic review, the rate of intrauterine adhesions after DNC for miscarriages ranged between 16% and 21%, and even higher in cases of repeat DNC. And the risk uh, rises with recurrent DNC. After more than one DNC, the risk is doubled, as you can see here. Uh, and for adhesions, prevention is probably the best med medicine. Uh, symptomatic uh, intrauterine adhesions and Asherman syndrome are very hard to treat. They tend to recur and often, especially in Israel where we live, are associated with lawsuits. So it's better to probably prevent it from happening in the first place. Regarding the formation of adhesions, it's probably uh, a process that starts from the from damage to the endometrium or the myometrium. This is followed by bleeding and sometimes also infection. Um, later on, a blood clot is formed with accumulation of leukocytes and uh, fibroblasts. Uh, you can see fibrin deposits. And later on, this creates intrauterine adhesions, 
these adhesions can be filmy and mild. They can also be severe and symptomatic. And um, this is the, the problem that we want to prevent. Okay. This is uh, actually taken from an Oxyplex uh, gel clip. Now, there are different ways uh, to prevent intrauterine adhesions, uh, as you all know. Um, first, we can discuss the surgical technique in treating different pathologies, and this is what we'll do today uh, in a way that might reduce the risk for adhesions. We can also use surgical instruments that might be less harmful for the endometrium. Uh, sometimes we use antibiotics to, to decrease the chance of infection. Uh, we often use IUDs or intrauterine balloons uh, to separate uterine walls away from each other and thus uh, prevent the chance uh, to create adhesions in uh, specific procedures. Um, uh, we also sometimes use intrauterine gels to create a barrier between the uterine walls and to decrease infection and inflammation, as you saw in the animation. This all just goes to show that uh, adhesions are, is a major issue that we want to avoid. Um, another way to try to prevent adhesions is maybe treating miscarriages medically. However, this, uh, there's not a lot of, of data on this subject. Uh, we, we found very little amount of studies that actually compare medical and surgical abortion in the term of adhesions. This is one of them. And uh, as you can see, a very small study with a, a lot of patients that were lost to follow up. So the question is, how can we do it better? And can hysteroscopy assist us? Now, hysteroscopic evacuation of miscarriage has a potential in both diagnosis of miscarriage and treatment. We can perform embryoscopy and find out if there are fetal problems that might have been the reason for the miscarriage. We can perform accurate genetic sampling from fetal material and find out if there is a genetic uh, cause for the miscarriage. And uh, we are also looking at the uterus uh, during the procedure. So uh, this might allow us to diagnose uterine malformations that need to be treated. The technique itself might be advantages in reducing the rate of retained products of conception as we can uh, target, as we can uh, visualize uh, the retained products and, uh, and treat them immediately. And we can also target the gestational sac and avoid the harm to the uninvolved uterine walls thus uh, preventing uh, or reducing maybe the risk for adhesions. And embryoscopy and fetoscopy have been used increasingly in the evaluation and treatment of miscarriages in the last two decades. Uh, direct vision of the embryo in the gestational sac enables evaluation and documentation of fetal morphology, as well as diagnosis of some anatomic malformations. And embryoscopy also allows for direct and accurate sampling of fetal tissues for genetic testing. Now, the first pioneer that uh, tried uh, to use the hysteroscopic morselation, morselator for treatment of mis miscarriage was actually from Australia, the Jason Abbott's group, uh, used it in a case of a patient with recurrent Asherman syndrome. Uh, they uh, concluded that uh, this procedure is feasible, but there was poor visibility due to bleeding. More recently, uh, two years ago, a group from uh, Belgium published their results with hysteroscopic treatment of missed miscarriage. They used a loop resectoscope. Uh, this was a retrospective study of 358 patients. 173 underwent DNC and 185 underwent hysteroscopy. There was less hemorrhage in the hysteroscopy group. Um, the hysteroscopy allowed for evaluation of intrauterine pathologies, as you can see, polyps, submucosal fibroids, uterine septums, intrauterine adhesions, and hysteroscopy took four minutes longer than DNC. This is the video that they published, and uh, we're just going to have a quick look at it. Um, they use the uh, cold loop the same way we do for uh, retained products of conception and basically just scrape off the uterine walls and separate the gestational sac from the uterus. Um, going over all of the uterine walls one by one uh, until the gestational sac is free um, from the uterus. And once this happens, uh, they basically 
um, used uh, polyforceps to remove the uh, gestational sac from the uterus. And I'll just uh, let you have a look at the uterus after the procedure. It looks empty. Now, there are also disadvantages to using hysteroscopy for this kind of procedures. Uh, it costs more. Um, and of course, the procedure takes a bit longer. The equipment is much more expensive than a suction curette. It is more complicated to perform the procedure than to do a DNC. And we are still ourselves, uh, and we're doing it for over a year now, we're still in the learning curve and trying to perfect the technique. Uh, it takes embryological knowledge and skills to identify fetal malformations in different steps of uh, uh, fetal development. And it also requires some experience and skill to identify all of the trophoblastic tissue and separating it from normal decidua if you just want to target the gestational sac. Basically, we purchased the TrueClear system um, a few years ago, and uh, we've used it in theater in the office uh, for different uterine pathologies and found that the principle is very similar to a suction curette. However, you can see what you're doing. So this is why we decided to start uh, with a feasibility study to assess whether we can treat miscarriage under vision uh, safely with the TrueClear. Uh, we did not want to compromise safety in comparison to a standard DNC, uh, so we created a very strict pro protocol. We only chose uh, pregnancies in very early gestational ages, up to 10 weeks. We also performed all of the procedures under ultrasound guidance, the same way we do a DNC. We chose only patients that had previous births without previous cesarean sections or uterine malformations because we did not want to allow for the possibility of harm to a uterus in a patient that doesn't have any children. And after the procedure, we performed a vaginal ultrasound scan the same way we do in a DNC. Uh, and if there was doubt, we did a DNC anyway and sent the contents of the hysteroscopy and DNC specimens to, it, to histopathology separately. And this allowed us to uh, evaluate which one is better, what you see with your own eyes or what the ultrasound tells you. And now I'll let Professor Pansky present our um, results. Hi, good evening and, and uh, thank you for the, for the opportunity. <clears throat> As uh, Dr. Barrel said, <clears throat> We knew that we are going a little bit into the minefield because, you know, we're trying to conquer very old procedure and relatively safe procedure like DNC uh, will create a lot of questions. But uh, we, we are very confident um, that, first of all, the true clear is, is, is a good, is a good uh, system. And the second is that uh, we will join the, the, the knowledge and we will join our knowledge uh, with the under vision procedures, that there is a, a worldwide movement now to do everything under vision, and we agree that uh, if it's possible, try to look what you're doing. Uh, so these are the two rationales that um, we manage. Uh, we, we convinced our Helsinki, Helsinki committee. It wasn't very difficult because we came very well prepared and, and, and uh, we had a lot of experience with the Truclear. So um, we, we started with a 10 cases, uh, which is a, a completely pilot study, feasibility study, uh, just to see uh, whether it's working and whether it's safe and, and we are not uh, creating any problem. Again, uh, um, our study was supported by Medtronic, but uh, everything was done by ourselves and uh, uh, we take uh, full responsibility for that. Uh, as Oshi mentioned, uh, our protocol uh, um, was simple, but quite uh, uh, tough. Uh, um, we took only uh, miscarriages, that uh, young miscarriages at the beginning. Uh, the age of the patient was uh, between 25 to 50. We, we uh, insisted that they already have uh, uh, children at home, uh, at least at the beginning and they are, they are practically healthy. And um, of course, those who, who understand exactly what is going on and uh, can be uh, can signed it from consent. Uh, um, 
The opposite is we didn't took any patient who has any uterine pathology, uh, previous design section, and uh, any any um, documentation about uh, um, malformed uterus, uh, submucal fibroids, and and we took for these ten cases, they are practically pure cases, uh, as it should be when you when you want to start. Uh, I will show you the first example uh, uh, that uh, one of the first cases that we did. You can see. Uh, this is the uh, sac, the, the pregnancy sac in the anterior wall. And uh, when you uh, start working, we, we are start uh, uh, our procedure by looking inside the sac. You see, this is uh, practically the view of the missed, uh, missed uh, miscarriage. And you see that the sac is, is almost uh, still complete. And uh, we start by uh, pushing the pedals and we uh, tried to come from the lateral side and not going uh, immediately uh, inside uh, the, the cavity of the sac because uh, there you can find more bleeding. So uh, um, we are doing slowly, slowly and, and you can see the visibility is very good and practically you can go around and, and see everything. And you see also that if there is some slight bleeding, the, the machine uh, washes it very good. So practically, um, when you say under vision, this is 100% under vision, you see everything. Once we didn't see enough, we stopped. Uh, and and uh, uh, we continue uh, doing DNC, but I can tell you that uh, all cases were done and, and we saw relatively good what we are doing. So practically, slowly, slowly, you clear the wall, and you'll see in a minute that we are doing the first cases under ultrasound guidance. Uh, and now you see the wall, which is quite clean, quite uh, <clears throat> empty. And uh, uh, we conclude the procedure. Sorry. Um, we, uh, at the beginning, we have uh, the small diameter uh, scope, the small diameter instruments. And, but we realized that uh, if, if we want to succeed uh, at the beginning, we need the, the, the elite, which is six millimeters, and then the seven millimeters uh, um, to be sure that we are taking everything and the procedure will end fast. Uh, we allow ourselves to use vasopressin or oxytocin when needed. Uh, Sometimes when you have bleeding, we wanted the uterus to contract, so we, we used all vasopressin or oxytocin we need it. And uh, we try to uh, manage uh, the pressure as low as possible. We start with 100 milligram. And after a few cases, we, we realize that we can use also 120 uh, uh, and, and uh, to control the absorbance of fluid because the procedure are not very far, not very uh, uh, long. And all cases, uh, uh, we invited the patient uh, to come and do an ultrasound. And we offer them to do also diagnostic hysteroscopy. Um, you, cannot, uh, you cannot force them to do hysteroscopy because it's invasive. Uh, so only, only uh, four out of the 10 uh, did it. And uh, we decided to do the first case, all the, all the cases under general anesthesia because uh, it's safer, we can control everything. But uh, we, we are more and more optimistic that sometime in the future we can move to the office also, which is going to be a huge advantage. Uh, we use the machine, we use an um, in and out uh, machine that, that count the, the deficit of fluid. And we did all cases uh, under ultrasound guidance, abdominal uh, ultrasound guidance. Um, Again, we want to be 100% sure that we are taking all the measures, uh, all the precaution measures, because this is a pilot, first cases, and we didn't want to fail. Um, when we realize that we are um, confident that the uterine is, is, end, is, is empty uh, and the ultrasound agreed, uh, we finish the, the procedure. You'll see that in some cases uh, we were not sure, so we, we follow up with, with the DNC. Uh, when we didn't see very well, 
uh, and uh, we define poor, poor uh, visualization when we are not sure where we are. So we stop the procedure and we finish it uh, by DNC. And as I told you, all patients came to, to, to do an ultrasound scan and to see whether there are some signs of uh, residual tissue. Um, we had an agreement uh, with our uh, uh, ethical committee, with our uh, health safety committee, that after five cases, we will give a report and, and say whether it's safe, whether we are happy, and, and, uh, and then we, we got the permission to continue. And we, we obliged it, and it was very good. Uh, now you can see a, a little bit what is going on in the OR. And uh, this is the ultrasound view when the machine is active. You see there is a lot of uh, flow inside. And you see quite well what is going in there. Now you see the, now you see the probe. And this is what, what uh, happens in real life. The surgeon can see the real video or he can follow up also the ultrasound. Uh, of course, other doctor is doing the ultrasound and he guide him from time to time if there is any, any questions. And you can notice also the anesthetist that is sitting below and he is very happy that we are not disturbing, disturbing him. So uh, this is the first cases uh, that we did with the ultrasound and uh, um, <clears throat> we found it quite safe. So as we said, uh, we recruit at the beginning 10 patients. Uh, most of them were done by the uh, uh, large diameter of the elite true clear. And uh, the medium gestational uh, age was nine, uh, more or less nine weeks, uh, um, according to last minister period. Uh, we didn't have any, any complication, not uh, um, early and not even not late complication. So practically, uh, at least after the first experience, we can say that it is a safe procedure. It took us about 24 minutes in, in average. Uh, uh, some some procedures were very fast, like nine, nine minutes, and especially the first procedure was a little bit long because we have to evaluate uh, 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 more the cases, and we got uh, uh, confidence a little bit after the first cases. Uh, regarding the visibility, uh, we finished all the procedures. Some of them was uh, less visible than, than the others, and it's always an issue of uh, how much you can wash out the bleeding. If you have a major, a major vessel that bleeds, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. So uh, that's the reason why we decided to start with miscarriages, uh, where the vascularity of the, of the stenzel sac and, 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 the, and the uterus is less. Uh, um, as I said, we finished all the cases, and uh, um, <clears throat> now we know much better how to approach from the lateral side and to uh, reach the vessels at the end, which is which is doing the procedure much much easier. Um, we had one case that was real uh, unsatisfied, uh, and we have four cases with that we did also a DNC because there was a, mis, uh, a misagreement between us and the ultrasound whether the, the uterus is really empty. Uh, as uh, Oshri Barel told you, uh, we send the specimen from the DNC separately from what came out from the trochlear. And in that way, we knew exactly uh, uh, if there is some real remnants. And uh, as we said, in one case, it was real remnants, uh, meaning that we didn't clear the uterus uh, as expected. And three cases, you can say it's false positive or false negative, whatever uh, you look at it, uh, and, and you can say that um, the ultrasound gave us a little bit of a mis, uh, misconcept, but uh, still we believe that uh, it's an important tool and, and we are still using it. And um, <clears throat> As I told you, we send it to pathology. Uh, so to conclude, uh, we have four main issues uh, in, in, this, uh, small, uh, in this small experience. Uh, today, we, 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 until today, we practically almost doubled the, the series, uh, but it's still uh, the same issues remain. Uh, uh, the visibility should be, should be, uh, should be good. And uh, it's, it is still a little bit difficult to, to uh, estimate 
whether you complete evacuate the, 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 the uterus and it goes with visibility. If you see very well, uh, you can be quite sure that it's empty. Uh, of course, the issue is bleeding uh, is, is, is there. Um, so those of us who use vasopressin can solve it or can improve it, or is, uh, even, uh, even oxytocin can help contracting the uterus and, and avoid bleeding. And of course, at the beginning, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a longer procedure than DNC. Uh, but don't forget, don't forget that DNC is, is being done for ages. And, and we have a lot of experience, and this is only the beginning of what we think could, could help us in the future. So how we try to overcome uh, those, uh, those issues, the, the obstacle visibility, uh, as, you, as I told you, we increased a little bit the pressure and it helped. So a lot more fluid is, is going in the, in the circle. Uh, we gave oxytocin and we use, uh, uh, we use vasopressin, diluted vasopressin. Um, how to estimate whether the uterine is empty? It, 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 this is the learning curve, and, and case by case, you, you get more experience. And again, the bleeding, uh, increased pressure, oxytocin, and vasopressin. And the time consuming, um, of course, if you use large uh, diameter instruments, uh, it will be shorter, and the learning curve uh, also will be more efficient. As we said, we do believe that in the future, uh, we can move to the office uh, with the small diameter uh, instruments. And hopefully uh, we will uh, uh, publish in the future also our experience of that. I'm gonna show you another, another clip, uh, which is also a nice one. Uh, you see the, the sack is anterior and uh, um, <clears throat> There is some material which looks like on the back of the of the uterus. Uh, it's uh, we realize that only in this procedure that was a missed abortion of twins uh, because uh, there are some remnants on the back on the back wall. Now you can see uh, uh, the embryoscopy. You see the embryo inside. You see quite quite a, um, good picture, and you can you can analyze uh, the anatomy. We are not expert in embryoscopy. But uh, we are surprised to see that you see very well. So after that, we move to the evacuation of the of the sack slowly, slowly, piece by piece, uh, starting again from the from the lateral uh, uh, walls of the sack. And uh, at the end, we also uh, cleared uh, also the back uh, the the, um, <clears throat> the other sack, which was on the on the uh, posterior wall of the uterus, and. Uh, Slowly, slowly, you can see that practically you see quite well. Uh, um, you can you can do the procedure quite safely, and uh, when you know how to apply the machine, uh, uh, good. So you are quite efficient in in taking out uh, uh, maximum tissue with minimal time. And again, uh, you can see that the uterus is quite uh, uh, quite empty, and that's it. So to summarize, um, we believe that the stroscopic modulation of early miscarriage is safe, and this technique may be valid treatment modality in selected cases to start with, uh, such as those with a current miscarriage or, or previous Asherman syndrome, and especially in those cases that you are fear to have more adhesions or to harm uh, to harm the uterus. Um, in the future. <clears throat> We, we think uh, uh, that this is just to the beginning. Probably uh, we will have to evaluate this technique uh, uh, comparing to other techniques, the other the, the other gold standards like DNC and et cetera, and to check whether it's real uh, safe and better regarding intrauterine adhesions and all the other uh, complications that we know that comes after the DNC. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our staff uh, which were we took which took part active part in the study uh, Shiri Weinberg, uh, Irad Borstein, uh, um, <clears throat> Professor Uzi Bella, and uh, Dr. Goldstein. All of them are MDs. And thank you for the opportunity. We are ready to take some questions. Thank you, Dr. Barrel and Dr. Orti. So I will introduce you now to Frank. More 
through to your team. Frank is going to bring us through some of the questions that we have received through the chat box. And also, again, as I said earlier, please keep them coming through if you have any questions. Frank, over to you. Thank you, Niall. So yes, again, I am Frank Forger. I am a you know, program marketing manager for the gynecological health at Medtronic in Western Europe. And uh, Niall asked me to, uh, to, um, to come with some questions that are either coming from you or we prepared in advance. So there were one question that came up in the Q&A section tonight, today. Uh, the question, uh, Professor Pansky and Dr. Barrell is, why do you need ultrasound? If you, are, you, if you are seeing what you are doing with the true clear, why having an ultrasound guidance on top of that during the procedure? Okay, so basically we don't need an ultrasound. Okay, and we, and we, it, seem, it seems this way because uh, uh, the, the ultrasound examination was part of our protocol. This was a pioneering procedure uh, we did not know uh, what will be the visibility. There was only one case published in the literature with poor visibility. And so we decided to do the procedure as safe as possible. That's why we, uh, and this was the demands of our Helsinki committee to do it as safe as the DNC at least. So this is why we did all of the procedures under ultrasound guidance. And as you can see, in most cases, we did not need the ultrasound. The main thing that the ultrasound did was to reassure us that we are doing uh, um, right and we are, uh, we are in the right place. And the other thing that it did was to mislead us because in four cases, the ultrasound scan at the end of the procedure, although we believe the cavity to be empty, uh, showed that there might be remnants. So we did the DNC and it was completely unnecessary because the, the, the histopathology came out negative. So we should probably trust what we see with our own eyes and not the ultrasound. But this was part of our protocol and that's why we continued it. And we still do actually for the next 50 cases, we'll still use the ultrasound because this, this is our protocol as, as, uh, uh, as was approved by our health Key committee. Thank you. And, and the question was uh, from uh, Dr. Manhatesh Karochi, which I, I say hi, by the way. And we, we have a, another, another question coming from uh, Jenny, Dr. Jenny Chan, uh, also from the UK, as uh, Dr. Karochi is from the UK as well. So Dr. Jenny Chan question is, why did you feel the need to exclude the previous complication from this trial? Rejection on the direct vision should be safer compared to traditional blind DNC. Okay, again, um, I, I, we emphasize it and we emphasize it again. Those cases are the 10 cases ever done and, and now ever published. Okay, so uh, we wanted them to be clear, clean, and, and that nobody will raise any questions about uh, severe cases or, or cases that, uh, uh, that are not uh, suitable and that because of that, uh, the study failed. Uh, um, in the future, we can do, I don't think that we will have so many uh, um, cases that we are going to uh, not to recruit, but don't forget, we have to convince everybody in our hospital that uh, uh, the, the cases are clear and we are not going to harm more than the necessary so that's the reason your your question is okay it's good uh, because in the future cases with asherman and, and other cases are eligible to do uh, will be eligible to do uh, as planned there will probably be an indication for the procedure not a, a exclusion criteria Okay, thank you. So another question coming uh, from uh, Dr. Gamborg. Uh, are there no problems with the uterus being extra soft and vascularized due to the pregnancy? Just has the problem is postpartum with removal of RPOC. So we have we have uh, lots of experience with uh, RPOC actually. Uh, we we use the true clear in our in our hospital for over three years now 
and uh, we've uh, we've uh, dealt with uh, I think over a hundred cases of RPOC in the office without anesthesia. Um, uh, most cases are not vascular uh, and and don't bleed. We we have very good uh, success rates, and we will publish that soon. But uh, pregnancy uh, or miscarriage is much more vascular than RPOC and bleeding is an issue. So this is why we uh, try to find a, a, a lot of uh, ways and methods to overcome bleeding because, because if you get a lot of bleeding, you won't be able to see what you're doing and you won't be able to complete the procedure. It is still a work in progress, I must say, because uh, we, uh, of course, the, the, the movies that you've seen is the good visibility. And we had uh, about 50% uh, of the cases with moderate visibility, which means we knew where we are. We knew that we're not perforating the uterine wall, but we couldn't see very clearly. And uh, it is a matter, a, a matter of learning curve as well, because, you know, we need to know where to approach the, the, the gestational sac and, and where the vessels are located but it's still a work in progress uh, before we can say that this technique is perfect. It's not perfect yet. Thank you. So I continue with the question that we we'll receive in the Q&A section. So this, is, this one is from uh, Dr. Mudada and uh, wanted to check your experience in using uh, Oh, using mechanical tissue removal system. So he meant the name uh, that is on the question is the name of the competitor. So I will not say it for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for written product of conception. So do you have experience using mechanical shavers? Absolutely. Or, That's or why I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've said it before. We, we've actually, since we started using the, the Truclear, we've uh, decreased the number of patients that went to the OR uh, for removal of retained products of conception. We, we mostly do it in the office and we have very good success okay. rates. On the, on the little sedation or no sedation? No sedation at all, no. No, no, no sedation at we, all. We sometimes use lidocaine in the fluid, but it's another, <laughs> it's another study. It's another study. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, so that's good. The question are, are, are coming. So I can continue, we still have time. So another question from uh, Dr. Carocci. Do you think Doppler ultrasound study to assess the remanent blood supply of mis miscarried tissue and then decide through clear management? It could be a good idea. Um, it could be a good idea. Uh, if, <laughs> if you have very, very good confidence on the ultrasound that says that it's going to be very vascular or not. Um, what we learned that, uh, in, in, especially in, in, in retained product of conception, if we do an office procedure and we see that it's highly vascularized, we stop. We take it to the OR. So we are not starting a, a procedure if we're not sure that uh, it's, it's, it's not very vascularized. And you can see, you can see in some cases that they are very, very vascularized. So don't, don't go into, into problem in, in the office. It's not that it's going to bleed heavily because it's small vessels, but still you won't be able to finish the procedure. So in uh, some cases we look and we decided to move to the OR. It's good. It's not a failure. It's just good choices of cases. Great. Thank you. So not sure we have uh, more questions coming in the Q&A. But by the by, we still have time. So we we prepare with Nial some some question. I may I may also uh, if you if you uh, if you want I may ask you. So um, uh, when when you talk to patient regarding this new approach, do you think are, are they comfortable uh, compared to the the other method? Do you propose both method and they are? What is their voice here to to yes, the treatment? So of, of course, we, 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 uh, when we try to get informed consent, we, we of course, uh, uh, tell the patients about uh, all possible ways of management of miscarriage, whether it's medical, surgical, and uh, what about the true clear. Uh, basically, what we tell them is that this is a new procedure. We don't uh, have a lot of experience with it uh, in comparison to uh, thousands of cases of, uh, of DNC that we did. Uh, we didn't do... Uh, we only did 10 of cases with the true clear, 
And uh, uh, the results are uh, probably uh, as good as, but still, this is too soon to tell. Uh, we tell them that if we don't see very well, or if uh, uh, or if there is any doubt, then we will do a standard DNC. Um, basically, most patients really, uh, when they hear that uh, uh, they have a choice between a procedure that's done under vision or a blind procedure, will choose the the procedure that's done under vision, although it's experimental yet, mm -hmm. uh, for, from our uh, point of view. And uh, so basically, they 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 like it. Uh, of course, this is done under under uh, anesthesia, so they don't see. Um, it's not done in the office yet. They don't see the the the, the case. They don't see the the context of the of the uh, miscarriage. So basically, uh, I I I'm not sure that they will be comfortable if uh, if it will be done without anesthesia. Uh, or, or if if it does happen without anesthesia, uh, they probably don't want uh, don't will not want to see. The future will tell. But I I I, I, I want to emphasize that the magic word I spoke with a few patients is that it is under it is under vision. This is what convinced them because it sounds so logic, and some of them were were very much surprised to know that DNC is hardly a blind procedure. Uh, so you are not going into details exactly what what's going on, but but when you explain it, uh, they can those who are intelligent can understand the difference. They said, okay, if you see what you are doing, it's probably safer, uh, and 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 that's that's why they are uh, convinced. And and slowly, slowly, I'm also convinced that it's safer, even though I did hundreds of uh, of uh, thousands or uh, maybe. Of of the NFs, okay. You you have, you have, you feel more secure when you see what you're doing. We are we are endoscopic uh, generation. We want to see what we're doing. Exactly. Thank you. A, a new question came in the Q and A box. So this is coming from uh, Dr. Polly Ford. What uh, gestation gestation do do you think this could be extended to? Is there a limited gestation that you feel is appropriate? So uh, we we basically we've narrowed down our cases to ten weeks, up to ten weeks. Yeah. Um, and I can say that uh, in hysteroscopy, if you want to take a look of the entire cavity, a uh, week that's uh, ten, 10 weeks is 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 about uh, about right. Uh, when you go back with the scope and take a look, you can see the, the entire cavity. Um, if you go a bit further than that, uh, you might not be able to visualize the whole cavity. So it, it is possible to do it, but but uh, it will take a bit of change to the technique because you need to maybe divide the uterus into quadrants and go to different quadrants, make sure that everything is empty. You'll have to do it in a different way. Uh, in 10 weeks, uh, up to 10 weeks, you can still see the whole cavity as one, and you can uh, uh, assess for uh, retained products after you complete the procedure. Uh, I think that's the main the main problem with, with uh, a large uterus. Other than that, I don't see a lot of issues. Okay, thank you. I put a, a question on my on, on my list regarding the technique itself, the surgical technique using Truclear. What what is your feeling about this uh, new approach, surgical technique? Do, do you think it is easily uh, reproducible, um, meaning that not too much operator dependent, and of course, assuming that the patient selection is correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first, you have to master the the, the instrument. Okay. Once you have confidence with the instrument, and, and we didn't start this, uh, this project until we were sure we know exactly how to deal with other pathology. So once you, you, you know all the, the tricks and tips about, about the machine, it practically is, is almost like doing a RPOC, okay? A retained product of conception. It's, it's rather similar. That's the reason why we, 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 we had the idea to start with it. Because it's it's rather similar uh, to empty a partial sac 
or some remnants of the placenta and, and, and to uh, get rid of all the sac. So it, it's, it's reproducible. Uh, still, uh, uh, we have to uh, face, as I said, uh, the, the issue of bleeding, the issue of recognizing that the uterus is empty and, and uh, a little bit faster the procedure. But, but it is reproducible, yes. I wouldn't start it as the first cases, okay, for beginners. But once you master the technique, uh, 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 you can move to these procedures. Okay, thank you. Delay or not. Nial, you, you, you want to ask some uh, questions on your, from your side? There's another question that came in through the chat box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right now. <laughs> okay. There's actually two more. Two more. Oh, Dr. Babu. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Babu is asking, uh, can, it, can it be used for retained product of person, retain, for retained product following term delivery? Is there an upper limit? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, absolutely. We we do it uh, a lot in our in our uh, office uh, uh, hysteroscopy clinic, um, and uh, we have we have done almost a hundred cases of retained products. Uh, even uh, most most of them were after after, after delivery. delivery. Um, about 20-30% uh, were after miscarriage. And uh, the, the, the RPOC in, the, in these cases are not very different. So they're, they're, they're mostly the same. Um, I have clips here if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. And another question also, again, from uh, Dr. Carocci. Did you guys come across emotional management of a difficult task to handle from patient point of view in your series? No, not really, not really. Um, we, uh, I will mention that we, we have started another project of, of uh, evaluating cases of, of uh, induced abortions. This was a bit difficult uh, emotionally for us. Um, we are having trouble in finishing this project <laughs> because when you do it for a, for a blind, uh, it's easier for the for the patient who's doing the determination. Um, it's much easier than seeing a live video and seeing what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, can be emotional sometimes. Uh, another question from Dr. Gamborg. Uh, for RPOC post Patrick, do you use the dense or the soft tissue shaver? Soft tissue. Soft tissue shaver. You, you, you never had a, a need for the dense no. tissue shaver? No, no. Placenta is soft. Placenta is very fluffy. Postpartum, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so it was postpartum, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Okay. From now, another question from Dr. Ab Abdo. Is there any long term implication after the procedure? We don't know. <laughs> we've, yeah. all, uh, we've only uh, followed the patients for a year now. But uh, basically, uh, uh, the, the answer is probably no. Probably no, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we've, we've only had, uh, uh, looking at the first 10 cases, um, all of them have, have come to us for a uh, for, uh, follow-up. Follow -up. And the uh, follow-up was normal. Uh, four of them agreed to come uh, uh, for a diagnostic hysteroscopy as well. And we could uh, demonstrate that the uterus is uh, looks nice, and there are no adhesions. Um, the rest uh, just uh, went on about the way. Some of them got pregnant, some didn't, and that's it. Okay. I have also um, a, a question more related around techni techniques uh, and, and instrument. 
So do you think that the size of the shaver matters according to the size, I mean, the volume of, uh, of tissue to remove? Um, I understand you said that you did the majority of your cases with the larger scope. And you, I think you said that it was um, diminuing a little bit your time of procedure just, just because the size of the instrument was bigger. Yeah. So uh, do you feel that uh, the, the smaller size uh, of scope and shavers will, uh, will uh, increase the, drastically the time of the procedure? We, we, are, we are optimistic that we will, uh, not at the end, but soon we, we, can, we can move to the office with the small diameter scopes, uh, uh, instruments, because uh, practically this is, this is going to be the, the real breakthrough. If right. you can finish uh, early miscarriages at the office safely and efficiently, uh, this is the big issue. But um, since we want to start in, in, in uh, slowly, slowly, and we want to be sure that we are doing the right stuff, the, that's why we choose to do it under general anesthesia. And when you do it under general anesthesia, you can a little, dilate a little bit the cervix and you put the, the, bigger, the bigger machines and 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 to shorten the, to shorten the procedure. Right. Uh, um, this is the optimal uh, uh, way of doing it now for us, because we are still in our early learning curve. We want to be modest. We still learn it. It's not that uh, we are we are going now to publish and 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 convince everybody go and do it. Uh, uh, no. We are not. We we are now. Uh, we are ourselves as, as still in the learning curve. So slowly, slowly, and and uh, we want to be safe, and we will, we want to be sure that we are doing the right stuff. We'll move to the office, uh, uh, but we still need to finish at least fifty cases. Uh, we estimate about fifty cases under anesthesia in the OR, fully controlled, and then probably will be able to do it uh, in, in the office. We are, we are doing extensive uh, work in the office with the, with the trochlea. Uh, practically, we, we, uh, we bought the small diameter uh, machine because we knew that this is the advantage to do it in the office. In the OR, we have many, many other instruments that are, are, are competitive, uh, but this one in the office is good. So, uh, uh, the time will come that we're going to move to the office for sure. Thank you. And I think uh, we have uh, still uh, the two last questions in the QA uh, box. So one from Dr. Polly Ford, were, were there any complication in uh, subsequent pregnancies? No, no. None? We are not aware of that. We did not have a lot of uh, patients who got pregnant after the procedure. I think there were only two. Uh, I mean, it was only uh, in the last year, so <laughs> they didn't have a lot of time. Not of, uh, some of them did not want to conceive again, and uh, some of them did not try, uh, but uh, there, there were no uh, uh, complications. Okay, thank you. And uh, the very last question from uh, Dr. Abdo. Did you stop the procedure for any of the patients so far? And if, if yes, why? And what about the blood loss? The blood, the blood loss, loss, sorry. So, so uh, this is a matter of learning curve. Uh, if you look at the results that we published, there were cases with, with uh, blood loss that was significant. Uh, I think the first two, but it's a matter of, of learning curve. You need to to uh, know what you're doing. These are the longer cases as well. Uh, it took longer. It took some time to understand how to clear the field from all the blood. And uh, as 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 you gain experience with the procedures, it gets much better. Thank you. Th thank you very much, uh, Professor Pansky and uh, Dr. Barrell, for your. Um, experience for sharing your experience and, and pioneering pioneering in that space because uh, always the pioneer sometimes takes takes the hit right so you have to uh, to uh, to persevere and uh, and tell us what are your outcomes in the future if, if especially when moving outside you are 
So thank you to all the participants also and for the questions that were very, uh, very nice to see flowing in the Q&A box. And I'll leave it to Nial to conclude. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, I, I, thought I just have one more question before we finished. Uh, it, it's a question that I heard a lot after your publication came out. And it was, and you kind of touched on it in your, in your presentation. But the question was always about the three patients that had to do an additional DNC to, to finish the procedure. They thought that was going to be due with vascularity and, uh, and being able to see within inside the cavity. So can you provide clarity on, on why they actually had to do a DNC after so the... Basically, we had, we had one case where the visualization was not good and we needed to do a DNC. And in that case, we also had uh, retained products of conception in the DNC specimen. In the other cases, the DNC was performed per protocol because we uh, performed a transvaginal ultrasound to all of the patients after they've completed the procedure. And if there was any suspicion of retained products on this ultrasound, we did a DNC. This was our protocol. In all of these cases where we saw that the cavity is uh, clean and empty, uh, there were no uh, retained products of conception in the DNC specimen. So basically, the ultrasound was false positive for uh, retained products. Uh, just to emphasize, we didn't uh, we didn't do the DNC because we didn't see what's going on there. We did uh, we did uh, uh, we did the DNC because the ultrasound see something which probably was not exist. Uh, that's the reason why we done only one case, uh, which was actually late. Uh, approved to be a retained protocol conception uh, was one that we abandoned because we didn't see uh, enough and, and we said it's not safe to continue. All the other nine cases were, were finished. And by the end of the procedure, we had doubts whether it's empty or not. So we finished with DNC. Great. Thanks, Thanks for the clarification. Okay, so we are coming up on the hour. So I think we can, we can call it there. Thanks, as Frank said, thanks again for taking the time to present out your results. Um, again, we have received a lot of interest in the technique, so, so thanks for, for giving your experience. So this webinar has gone live on YouTube, so if you go over to EARCAD now, you will be able to see that presentation back, or if you want to forward, on, forward it on to any of your colleagues, please feel free to do so. Okay, great. Thanks for joining everyone, and see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.